And I think we were really organized and efficient in how we went about this. And that's why we got where we are today. You know, the committee has been meeting regularly for the last nine weeks with the intent of identifying quality candidates that we felt were right for this organization. The characteristics that we set really early in the process were leader of men, guys with integrity, guys that were secure and open-minded, collaborative in their thinking. Of course, intelligence, but a really good football acumen as well. You know, I think we were able to identify, you know, some high-quality candidates that possessed these characteristics that we we're looking for. But at the end of the process, unanimously, we all felt that Freddie was the right fit for this organization moving forward. Freddie doesn't need any introductions here, ladies and gentlemen. He's a man that's dedicated his entire life to the game of football. He's been around some exceptional football guys. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And he's a real unifier of men and people. Freddie did an outstanding job the last eight games of this season. He galvanized the offense. He put players in position to make plays. And Freddie has a great vision for this organization moving forward. I'm excited to work alongside of Freddie Kitchens, as I like to say, to awake the sleeping giants. It's my pleasure to introduce the 17th head coach of the Cleveland Browns, Freddie Kitchens. Thank you, John, for all those kind remarks. <laughs> Hopefully everybody agrees with you. But uh, I want to first start by thanking um, you know, Mr. Jimmy and Miss D, JW, uh, the whole Haslam family, John and his, uh, his group, and Paul and his group. Um, you know, I want to thank everyone uh, from Glenville State College to the Cleveland Browns and everywhere in between. Um, you know, I want to thank Woody McCorvey and Sylvester Croom. Gene Stallings for teaching me that the game of football is more than just the X's and O's. I want to thank Rick Trickett for giving me my very first job at Glenville State College. I want to thank my two daughters, Bennett and Camden, for you know understanding the nuances of this profession. Time constraints, half the year. And I want to thank uh, one of the most important, the most important person in my life um, with devotion to me and for my calls and uh, just always understanding me, understanding me, not understanding what I'm saying sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes she'll kick me in the what, you know? So, but anyways, my wife, Ginger, uh, I wouldn't be here without her. Uh, you know, I really like stress to John and, and everybody involved in this search and, and interviewing these coaches, I wanted a thorough search. I really wanted to compete against everybody that wanted this job and that was a legitimate candidate for this job. I wanted it and, uh, you know, I wanted to go in and state my case per se. But when I went in and stated my case, I wasn't stating anything. I was very proud that everything that I put in my book was my words from my typing, all right, even though my daughters had to show me how to do the PowerPoint, all right. <laughs> But I'm proud of that because every word I had in there was my words. And then I get in there and I don't use it because I know everything that's in it. So I want everybody to understand that I believe that they made the best decision. And I believe that they believe they made the best decision. In saying that, I find great comfort in knowing that they were together in doing that. And the one thing, you know, there's ups and downs during the course of the season. And there's one thing that has to happen during the course of the season if you want to get back up from being down. And you have to be together, all right? That's not going to change. Within the football team, that's not going to change. And from this day forward, it's never changing, all right? Since 1999, there's been ups and downs with this organization. And just like during the season, sometimes there's more ups and sometimes there's more down. And since 1999, I understand and I relish the fact that there's been more downs than up. But that ends today. I, I promise you that. 
in every decision we make as an organization, and John would uh, agree with this, I'm sure he would, that every decision will be based on one thing and one thing only, and that's winning football games. Let's not fool ourselves. This game is about winning. Everything we do in the organization, from the football side of things, and moving forward with the organization, we're together. If you don't wear brown and orange, you don't matter. All right? This is the only organization that we care anything about is the one that we're at right now, and that's the Cleveland Browns. All right? And it's always going to be about one thing and one thing only, and that's winning football games and putting a good product on the field that plays with effort, enthusiasm, and toughness. So in saying that, uh, you know, I kind of took on the mind, and some of these things I'm using from the interview because I truly believe it. You know, the letter I is a letter. It's not a word. And when it's used as a word, you've got problems. So that's the number one thing that you won't ever hear. All right? It's we, us, our, because we're all going to take ownership in this thing. And you know what? It's going to make it that much more special when we get to the top. All right? Two is one and one is none. And we're going to have a lot of twos. We're all going to be together. Coaching staff, I know John and I are looking forward to working together. John's staff, Paul's staff, everybody is going to be together. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Now get there in the same direction. All right, in saying that, I will end with this. That our only goal ever, 7, 8, and 1, it drives me crazy that people are happy with 7, 8, and 1. It drives me literally crazy. And if I was in a different setting, I, my vocabulary would demonstrate that. But, you know, that's not acceptable. Nobody here wants that. We understand that was an improvement, but under no circumstance is that ever going to be acceptable. We only have one goal here, and that's to host the Lombardi Trophy. And everything we do moving forward is going to, if it's going to uh, benefit us moving in that direction, we will make that decision from a coaching staff perspective. There won't be any, uh, everybody's going to be on the same page from a coaching staff perspective. And the relationships that you build in this business have to earn trust and respect. And we're going to always, everything we do within this organization is going to be trust and respect oriented. Because that allows you to understand that you can have tough conversations with that. All right? You can understand that different people have different beliefs. And if you spend time listening instead of just hearing, then sometimes maybe you can learn some things. So I will close with this. Everything will always center around winning the Super Bowl. I went to the Super Bowl. I lost the Super Bowl. I never want to be in that position again. But every decision I've made since 2008 has been getting in position to do that. And I have been fortunate enough to be surrounded at this day and age, this time, right now, to moving forward in that direction. And that's all. Thank you very much.